games, but they will also be competing for prize money as well in the form of skins. And those of you who might be joining us for the first time, perhaps you're not uh, quite familiar with our rules, we will give you familiarization right now with those rules as we uh, tell you how it all works here on Candlepin Skins. The bowlers do keep, compete individually, one box at a time. There's a dollar value assigned to each box. The high score in the box wins the skin. If the uh, high score is tied in a particular box with spares or strikes or whatever, then the dollar value carries over to the next box. Now, the top two bowlers in total pinfall return week to week for a chance to accumulate further prize money. And now, as far as the dollar amounts go, in the different boxes, the first three boxes in each of our two games are worth $20. The next three boxes are worth $25. Boxes 7, 8, and 9 are worth $30 apiece. And the big tenth box in each of our two games worth $75. Tom Morgan has accumulated about $1,100 in prize money over the last four weeks. He's going to try and keep it going today. But three challengers are ready, and we're going to be back with Game 1 on Candlepin Skins right after these messages. Don't go away. Hi, I've been telling you that at Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire, you will find the best price from a dealership that cares. Well, let me tell you what you will find when you get there. First, when we can display Toyota, Dodge, and Nissan at one location, this is a rare opportunity for you to view the best selection of cars, trucks, and minivans in New England. Second, we are constantly adding cars and trucks to our used car inventory. So if it's a new or used car or truck, just remember Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. There is power in a dream And every hour a dreamer is born Just imagine the friends we made The lives we touched, the glory days Ten years of dreams Ten years of dreams Come true On March 31, 1993, liberal Dick Sweat cast the most important vote of his career. He voted for final passage of a budget that included $272 billion in new taxes, paving the way for the largest tax increase in history. Dick Sweat said yes to higher taxes and bigger government. It was a defining moment. Dick Sweat proved beyond any doubt he's a liberal. Dick Sweat, we believe he's too liberal to trust with our money. Introducing new Honey Nut Clusters with a taste everybody will love. New Honey Nut Clusters combines honey toasted flakes and Honey Nut Clusters for a delicious Honey Nutty taste. New Honey Nut Clusters, the taste everybody loves. Everybody. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Well, here are the roll-off scores for this week's program here on Candlepin Skins. In association with the Massachusetts Bowling Association, our roll-off, final roll-off for this week's show from the Cape. Although, as it turns out, the two guys that are here are both from the South Shore. <laughs> Jim Gregatis and Eric Young finishing one and two. The other three names here are the guys who just missed. John Lang just two pins out of the money. Mike Kucha just four pins back from second place. And Don Santiago, a name familiar to you, Dan, in that fifth spot. But it's Eric Young and Jim Gregatis who are here. And Eric Young will fire the first ball today here on Candlepin Skins. 
Eric making his first appearance with us. Uh, lefty. Leaves the three, five, and six. And now Jim Gregatis, who's been with us previously. Oh, that close to a spare. Jim will shoot at the four horsemen plus the nine. Eric will take a nine box to start. And Jim Gregatis will take an eight. $20 skin, of course, to open it up here in box number one. Bob Whitcomb and Tom Morgan now on the lanes. He's a good look at Bob. Right through the heart. And now Tommy Morgan on lane three, missing the head pin. So, let's see. Nine is up there for the skin. It's gonna be a... Oh, let's see. Hmm. Is, we're gonna start off with a nine box? Come on. <laughs> Bob needs two of these to create the... Oh, what a 10! Great 10 box. That might be enough for the skin, and it is. It is. <laughs> Bob Whitcomb steals that first skin with the 10 box, and that's worth another look. The two, three, and four. Great you, shot. You don't see those three pins made very often. Well, ordinarily, when a skin goes on a 10 box, we might say that it's kind of a chintzy one, but it's not that one. Not that one's right. That was a great shot by Bob Whitcomb. Now the bowlers swap lanes. Big nine pin drop by Eric on lane three. Jim for the spare. I right, missed the object. Watch out, though. The ball is still around. The head pin is still there. And that is a great spare for Eric Young. He had all kinds of problems worrying about that wood that was in front of the 10 pin. But he made the shot anyway. Tom Morgan, it's been quite a story here over the last four weeks. Yeah, it came within the one box of not coming back. Come on, Tommy. That was uh, something like Doug says four weeks ago. Bob oh. Whitcomb following up that great 10 box with a strike, and there is another $20 skin for Bob. So Bob Whitcomb off to a very impressive start. Came to play, so to speak. Tom Morgan for the 10 box. Here's Bob Strike. No doubt about it. Crossover right in the Brooklyn side, the one two, but nice and tight. The result is the strike. Eric Young filling his spare with a solid nine drop. Eric says maybe it's going to take strikes here. Now I'll try to get a strike and very close to that. Just the six pin left, but a big nine fill on his spare. Once again, though, he's got wood all over the place in front of the pin he's shooting at, and this time it cost him. Ooh, and Jim Gregatis somehow got the ball in between the two and that piece of wood. Ten box for Eric Young, but an opportunity lost there because of the wood. And Jim Gregatis settles for seven. He's looking for his first mark still. Bob Whitcomb now ready to go, throwing on this strike in the second. So far, it's been in the uh, Bob Whitcomb show. First two skins, first two boxes went to Bob with a great 10 in the first box, and then, of course, that strike and looking for the double. Boy, that was a pretty good ball, too. Gets a little break with the five pin going over. He's got the three, six, and nine. A couple pieces of wood in between the three and the six and the six and the nine. So if he's on the three pin, he's going to get a spare. Spare it is on strike. And another skin. Yes. Yes, indeed. Bob Whitcomb takes his third skin in a row. It's off to a quick start here. And Tom Morgan is still looking for his first mark. So as we go to box number four, it's a $25 skin now. 
Bob Whitcomb in the lead, both in terms of prize money and pinfall at this point. And if you're a relative newcomer to skins, you'll be amazed to see over the weeks ahead, getting a high score doesn't necessarily mean that you're winning all the skins money, and that's, vice versa. That's right. You just have to win the boxes at the right time. Jim Brigadis will be open again. Eric Young has another mark. Jim will take. Oh, he hit the seven pin, but it did not go over. It'll be a nine box. Meanwhile, Eric Young's spare conversion. It's the only other bowler that's got any marks is Eric with two spares, but no skins to show for it. Tom Morgan now in lane four. Tom on the head pin this time, and he'll have something to shoot at. Bob Whitcomb on a spare. Another good first ball, and he's got the strike. And the skin. And there's the spare for Tom Morgan, his first mark. Well, Bob Whitcomb is throwing a shutout right now. <laughs> Bob's just saying, thanks for coming, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth box now, Eric Young working on a spare. Eric's probably uh, wondering, what do I have to do to win a skin? Probably throw a strike. There so it I is. Will. <laughs> Boy, that was a nice looking ball. He's been throwing a great ball right from the uh, start of the match. Picked up a great spare in the second, dropped nine, had another tough piece of wood and wasn't able to convert in the third. Then he came back with a spare and then you just saw the strike on spare. Meanwhile, Jim Gregatis is still looking for his first mark. Well, Bob Whitcomb can't win this skin. The best he can do is carry it over if he were to throw a strike. And if he does, that'll be a double. <laughs> Four consecutive marks, and he'll be on his way to a great game. He is now, really. 60 after four plus the two balls on this strike. Looking pretty good. Wow, yeah. seven, eight, and nine. Buddy has a lot of wood. Well, last chance to have a carryover. Tom Morgan needs a strike. Nope. So give a skin to Eric Young. That's a $25 skin for Eric, his first. And Bob Whitcomb convert the seven, eight, and nine. For his fourth straight mark, no. Good effort. Everything but the nine. Tom Morgan trying to make something good happen there, but could not. It'll be a nine for Bob and a nine for Tom. And that will bring us to a timeout. Quite a show so far for Bob Whitcomb. He is in the lead with total pinfall, but Eric Young is right there with him, and he'll be working on a strike when we return to Candle Pin Skins in a minute. Everyone at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire is very proud and excited to again be a major sponsor of Stars and Strikes. We feel that over the years, you, the bowling enthusiast, have become a very important part of our family at Rockingham. And as such, I promise that we will live up to our pledge that we will provide you the best service you have ever experienced. And if you're purchasing a new or used vehicle, at Rockingham, we pledge that we will beat any bona fide deal on any Toyota, any Dodge, or any Nissan anywhere in New England. So just remember, Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan on Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. You know, I'd always thought the politicians weren't like the rest of us. So I wasn't so sure about Dick Sweat. But when I finally got to know him, I realized he's just a regular guy. And he's got some pretty good ideas, too. I'm not really interested in politics, but I do vote. And I'm going to vote for Dick Sweat. It's just a natural fact of life. As we get older, some of our parts don't work as well. 
Fortunately, with all the cars, you can get those parts replaced at Monarchy. Well, we take good care of every car, young or old, mufflers, brakes, CD joints, shocks, and struts, high-quality parts and service at a reasonable price. Monarchy keeps cars of all ages running like new. Too bad they can't do anything about this 1949 classic. At Monarchy, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. We asked people to try a nutritious new pasta dish. It's very good. It's the spot. Mm, this is wonderful. Nice herbs and spices. What is it? It's Hamburger Helper's new Italian herb. Hamburger Helper? It's Hamburger Helper? I'm surprised. Under 325 calories per serving. I'm a calorie counter. No preservatives. No preservatives? This is new then. New Italian herb. One of three new flavors of Hamburger Helper. I'm impressed. I think I'll put it in my shopping cart. How about some more? Makes a real good, feel good deal. Why? Can you say please? Please. Okay. New Honey Nut Cheerios, and they're all for me. Nobody can say no to New Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to the Honey Nut O's in New Honey Nut Cheerios. What's new is a better blend of real golden honey for a better taste and a bigger crunch. Nobody can say no to the Honey Nut O's in New Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to New Honey Nut Cheerios. It's new. Everybody loves this. Candlepin Skins is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now with Mega Cash, choose your dream. Jim Gregatis and Eric Young up on the line as we pick it up in box number six. This is a $25 skin. We're still looking for our first carryover of the day. Jim just has not been on target yet, although he got a nice break on that ball. Eric Young on a spare. Or on a strike, rather, I beg your pardon, and he nearly doubled. Everything but the seven pin, and that eight pin almost fell into it. Bob bid for his first mark. So Jim is finally on the board with a spare, and Eric Young has a spare as well. Well, we may have a carryover after all, unless one of these bowlers throw a strike. That's There's Jim Gregatis' mark. Yeah, for one, two, and seven. So that loosened Jim up a little bit. That first one's always the toughest. Tom Morgan. No strike there. Bob Whitcomb. We have a carryover. Our first of the day. Tom Morgan looking for his second mark. Shooting at the 1-2. And he's got it. A tougher shot for Bob Whitcomb. Oh, but he gave it a nice run. How about this? If he had touched that 9-pin a little harder, this may have toppled into the 10. And he almost got it that way. Nine box for Bob. The carryover created with the spares. So that means the seventh box will be worth $55 now. And Eric Young is working on another mark. Chance to take over the lead from Bob Whitcomb. He'll, He'll have a chance. Kick that six pin out. Leaves himself just a 4-7, but a nice piece of wood in front. Jim on the other hand goes straight through. Just a four on his spare. It could have been a two. It looked like he was in danger of chopping out the one and the five. Make it four marks in a row for Eric Young. Oh, good bid by Jim. Ooh, nice ten box for Jim. So you see Eric Young with the spare. Already at 106, plus a ball in the seventh. Taking the lead in the match. Bob Whitcomb. Uh, spare is up for the skin, too. And Bob Whitcomb may have a shot at a spare as well certainly. if that wood turns. Yep, certainly does. He's got the three and seven, but all kinds of wood that's going to help him out. And then if he's going to be a carryover, I think Bob better get his. It's Tom Morgan just three on his spare fill. Oh, and Bob ah. misfires, so give the skin to Eric Young for $55. Your first carryover skin of the day. Bob Whitcomb takes a nine, so he will remain in second place. Tom Morgan has an eight. Didn't really take full advantage of that spare in the sixth. So Eric Young and Bob Whitcomb running one and two right now in total pinfall. 
Eric can put a little distance between the rest of the field with a spare in the seventh. He's the only one up and has a big strike. Jim Gregatis with his first strike, and there's Eric's strike. So we already have a carryover here in the eighth. Wow. That's four <laughs> marks in a row for Eric Young. Eric uh, is inciting the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> he learns quickly. <laughs> Tom Morgan. Oh, oh look at this! Strikes already in this box. Now Bob Whitcomb. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we've ever had that happen here on Candle Pin Skins. A carryover with three strikes. Another nice effort for Bob Whitcomb on the spare attempt. Bob had it go in the second, third, and fourth when he went strike, spare, strike, but he has been uh, shut out ever since. And quite a few bulls making a run at that second spot right now. Nine for Bob, so he's going to lose ground to the field here as everybody else has a strike up in the eighth. The carryover now and the ninth box is worth $60. Eric, who cross, caused the uh, carryover, will throw first. Six, seven, and ten. Piece, couple pieces of wood, one in front and one behind the six and the ten. And a seven drop for Jim Gregatis as well. Go right at the ten pin. He's trying and oh. So Eric is finally open after five marks in a row and Jim Gregatis comes up with spare on strike and he needed it nine for Eric Young already at 144 is Eric Young through nine but Jim has a spare up in the ninth takes the lead for the skin Bob Whitcomb Four horsemen left for Bob. One, two, four, seven. And Tom. now Tom Morgan on his strike. A well, couple of possible chances for a spare here and a carryover. Bob Whitcomb to shoot first. Nope. Tom looking for spare on strike, and he's got it. And that's another carryover. Ooh, and an eight oh. box for Bob as he misfired on the 4-7. Take a look at Tom Morgan's conversion of the triangle. Yes, the two, four, and five. Crisply done. Box number 10 now worth $135. And very quietly, Tom Morgan now is creeping up in that second spot. Jim have a little bit to say about it right here with this ball. Ouch. But not much to say. Just three pins. Two pins. The head pin and the nine. Sorry, Jim, I tried to steal another one for you. <laughs> wow, and now he's got the spread eagle after two. Spare for Eric Young as he is back on track again. And a very tough five box for Jim Gregatis. Jim uh, took a while to get started, but of his three marks coming down the stretch, he had a four fill and a two fill. So he winds up with 102. Eric Young stays up to fill his spare, and he will fill it with seven. A 161. Very nice, and it could have been a lot more than that. He had a couple shots early in the match, early in that game, I should say, that the Wood really blocked his chances. A great game by Eric Young. Tom Morgan filling a spare. Remember, a $135 skin on the line here. And Tom has a chance to cause the carryover unless we can get a strike from Bob. He's going to look at that wood, but I don't think the wood can carry both of those pins. And Tom is, uh, well. <laughs> no, nope, oh, chop it. It's looking good for uh, Eric right now, depending if Bob can convert the six, seven, uh, six, four, six, and ten. Ooh, almost. Whatever it was, he didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a big skin for Eric Young, $135, so he's got $215 now in skins money. A nine for Tom, a ten for Bob, and we total up the scores here after game one on Candlepin Skins. Eric Young with a huge game one, 161. 
Second place right now, Bob Whitcomb with the 123. Tom Morgan at 121, and Jim Gregatis needs a big second game. We'll be back with that second game on Candlepin Skins from Pilgrim Lanes after these words. Introducing new Honey Nut Clusters with a taste everybody will love. New Honey Nut Clusters combines honey toasted flakes and honey nut clusters for a delicious honey nutty taste. New Honey Nut Clusters. The taste everybody loves. Everybody. <laughs> This is where we get our health care. This is where Dick Sweat thinks we should get our health care. Dick Sweat co-sponsored a plan to have government take over our health care. It would have created 50 new government agencies and 50,000 new bureaucrats, all paid for by a whopping $71 billion tax increase. The last thing we need is health care from the people who brought us the $600 toilet seat. Dick Sweat. We believe he's too liberal to trust with our money. Values to the Senate, but in Washington, he's voted against our kids to cut Head Start student loans in math and science in our schools. He favors abolishing the Department of Education. He's voted against seniors to cut their home heating assistance and Medicare and take away their right to choose their own doctors. He's voted against working families to raise taxes on those earning up to $30,000 a year and abolish the loan program for small business. Maybe this is one, Mr. Smith, that doesn't belong in Washington. The choice is clear. It's Bonneville Dodge Jeep Eagle's 50th anniversary sale. Every 97 caravan is $50 over sales invoice. 50 years of low overhead prices. 97 Ram Tough Trucks as low as $13,997. 50 years of integrity. 97 Intrepid Cab Ford Luxury, 1,000 cash back. 50 years of value. 97 Stratus loaded with extras from $13,997. Experience the difference of Bonneville Dodge Jeep Eagle. Exit 9S off I-93 Manchester. As we return on Candlepin Skins, the Skins prize money in game one, Bob Whitcomb actually won the first four boxes in a row. And then Eric Young took the rest of the money in that first game, $215 worth. So they are both on the board. Jim Gregatis and Tom Morgan are not yet on the board, but they hope to change that here in game two. But here's the guy who leads in total pinfall as well, Eric Young, with that 161. He had six marks in the last seven boxes. This is a $20 skin here to start game two. That's the kind of day it's been for Jim Gregatis, the half Worcester. Eric takes eight. Jim waiting for that wood to settle back. He was hoping he'd get a couple more <laughs> pins. Oh, nice shot. Deserved the 10. He'll take a nine. But Jim needs marks. Yeah, he certainly does. He's, uh, as you can see, trailing. And don't forget now that nine box of Jim is already added into the total pinfall at the bottom of the screen. So he trails Bob and Tom. This could be a battle for third unless, a battle for second rather, unless Eric Young has a real bad game here in the second because he's got a 38 pin lead over second place right now. And here we go, just like the first game, the nine boxes up there for a skin. Bob Whitcomb's looking at the 4 7 10 on an easy spare lead, nor does Tom Morgan at one. Well, Bob's at least put himself in a position to get a 10 box. It's going to be a more difficult 10 for Tom Morgan. 
Oh, oh Bob oh, thought about oh, playing oh. the wood and turned it you too know, far. And, and he's not even close to my age. <laughs> <laughs> so that cost him the skin, and Bob has a big smile on his face <laughs> as he comes back. He was trying to be, I'm not sure what he was trying to do, whether he was trying to be safe or. I think he's trying to play the wood. Yeah. That's something, you know, when you get up in age, you take all the <laughs> advantages you can. And, well, I'll have to talk to Bob about that one. Ooh. Meanwhile, it's a carryover, and box number two here now is worth $40. Looking for our first mark of this second game. Could be for Jim Gregatis right here. Yeah, advantage Jim right now. Well, there it is. And like in all sports, big round of applause for the underdog, which is Jim right now being or trailing the other three bowlers in total pinfall. Eric takes a 10. That's the first time today that Eric Young has gone two boxes in a row without a mark. He had seven marks in the first game on his way to a 161. Meanwhile, Tom Morgan, if he wants to uh, continue his streak here on Candlepin Skins, has some work to do. Spare is up leading this skin. Bob Wickham just missing the head bin to the right. And Tom Morgan misfires on the triangle of three, five, and six. Could be a skin for Jim Gregatis, his first. Uh, oh, yes, it is. Bob almost got that spare. So Jim Gregatis gets on the board his first skin of the day. Ten box for Tom. And a ten for Bob Whitcomb. So that's good news for Jim Gregatis. Not only did he win the skin, but he also gets a mark when nobody else did, as you see Bob Whitcomb's near miss on a possible spare. $20 skin here in the third, and Eric Young has a spare lead. Has to be careful that wood out in front. He's got the two and the four. He probably wants to try to avoid the wood. Jim throws seven on his mark. Yep, just tipped the wood, but not enough to deflect the ball. Spare up in the third for Eric. Jim can't make the cut shot. And an eight box for Jim. Candlepin Skins brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. Our great friends here at the Winds of New England, longtime sponsors of both our Saturday and Sunday programs. Don't forget, tomorrow at noon, from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. It's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We begin a brand new four-week series. Bob's ball wants to break from right to left, but he is rearing up as, at the point of delivery, so he's not staying under the ball. That time he did. If he, if he rears up, the ball straightens out on him and doesn't break back into the head pin. Tom Morgan, bid for the spear. Give the skin to Eric Young. $20 more for Eric. I think Eric likes this format. Bob Whitcomb takes nine. And Tom Morgan takes eight. And both Bob and Tom are looking for their first mark here in game two. So that's made the battle for second place closer, as you see. Jim is only 15 pins behind Bob Whitcomb. Jim on the head pin, but too much on it. Four, five, six, seven, ten. Eric on a spare. Still, still falling. Seven and eight left. And a nice piece of wood out in front. Couple, two more to the right. Now the question is, will this shot go for Jim Brigadis yeah, with he's the gonna, wood? I think he's going to go right at the five pin and clip the left-hand piece of wood. That's what he's trying to do. Oh. Not that close. Now Eric for the spare. And he's got it. Two in a row. I just get the feeling, Dan, that... No one's going to be catching Mr. Young today. I don't think so. He's going with a lot of confidence right now. He makes a mark. He's back with that clenched fist like he's under control. A near miss for Jim Gregatis. He really could have used that mark. As he is still in fourth place. Tom Morgan with the half Worcester. Yeah, Eric is already over 200. After 14 boxes, he's still got a bonus ball coming on the spare. And he leads in this skin with a spare. Oh, oh, but there's the half. 
by Tom Morgan as he converts the half. Worcester, great shot. Uh, something like that sometimes gets the bowler going. It's, it's a type of mark you don't expect to make. Let's one, look at it again. One, two, and four for Bob to complete his mark. That was quick, too, with the half Worcester right. Cleared out the other eight pins. Let's see if that lights a fire under Tom Morgan. $50 skin now here in the fifth. And Eric Young has eight more on his mark and a chance for another one. And oh. a strike for Jim Brigadis. Don't count Jim out. Oh, and boy. Eric gets it. Oh, it's, my. It's Eric's day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the strike by Jim Brigadis. Just tripping the six pin. You know, Eric seemed to chop out the front piece, uh, front wood, uh, front pin, I should say, and then he got a nice break out of the channel. Deadwood to knock the other pin down for three marks in a row. Wants that 10 pin to go. That's got wood seven. rolling across, but that's not going to help. Big ball for Tom Morgan. Oh, right through the middle. Just five. The skin goes to Jim Grigatis with the strike. That's a $50 skin for Jim. And now Bob and Tom will try and solve these very difficult leaves for spares. Nope, no luck there for Bob. Oh, oh Bob, oh. that shot! Wow, he makes the half whister! And then the big five, what a shot by Tom Morgan. Here he comes. Eight box for Bob Whitcomb, and that will take us to a break. Two outstanding shots in a row by Tom Morgan as he's trying to keep his streak alive. He's running third right now. We'll take a look at it again as we go to break. We're coming right back on Candlepin Skins. Hi, I've been telling you that at Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire, you will find the best price from a dealership that cares. Well, let me tell you what you will find when you get there. First, when we can display Toyota, Dodge, and Nissan at one location, this is a rare opportunity for you to view the best selection of cars, trucks, and minivans in New England. Second, we are constantly adding cars and trucks to our used car inventory. So if it's a new or used car or truck, just remember Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. I'm Betsy Smith from Manchester, and this is my son, Alex. I'm supporting Senator Bob Smith because he's worked hard on issues that are important to me like affordable daycare, tax cuts for working families, and on finally balancing the federal budget. That's important for Alex. Bob's always been a man of his word. He's honest, decent, and he's worked hard for New Hampshire families. Senator Smith and I don't agree on every issue, but he's someone I trust, respect, and he's someone I'm proud to support. Bob Smith is my senator. At the car lot, we let our cars be the target. The car lot only deals with the best in used cars. I'm one of the chosen few, and I'm proud to be called a car lot car. You can own me regardless of past credit problems. It's no problem at the car lot. The car lot has programs for everyone with down payments as low as $99 and payments as low as $29 a week. The car lot can finance you no matter what. So come on down and drive us home. We're waiting for you at the car lot. Next time I get to make the commercial. Jolly Jim's when you're looking for a bargain. All you need is Jolly Jim's. That's right, this weekend it's time to bargain hut at Jolly Jim's, New England's largest indoor flea market, only at the Valley Expo Center in the Methuen Mall. At Jolly Jim's you'll find thousands of bargains and unbelievably low prices on gold and silver jewelry, tools, clothes, dollar tables, and much, much more. That's Jolly Jim's Flea Market Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Valley Expo Center in the Methuen Mall, Methuen, Mass. Something wrong with my car. Can you take a look? I'll check it out. You need suspension work. Better see the experts at Meineke. Meineke does suspensions? Meineke doesn't just do mufflers and brakes. They do complete undercar care. Now, buy any Gabriel gas shock or gas strut at Meineke's regular low price. Get the second one at 25% off. This is a limited time offer, so hurry. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. All right, five boxes to go. Great excitement here in game two as we have got a terrific battle going on for second place. This is a huge ball for Jim. Working on a strike really needs a double. Not quite. Good bid. Definitely has to keep marking. $25 skin here in the sixth. 
No, Jim misfires. He'll take eight on his strike. And an open box for Eric Young. A rarity today. Jim Gregatis takes 10. And so does Eric. Again, the cumulative two game totals, total pinfall, are at the bottom of the screen. So you can see those last three scores, how close it is. Of course, Bob and Tom are still to roll here in game six, or rather box six. And Tom working on a spare. He will go first on lane four. How about the two shots that he made back to back? He may have to make another one here to keep it going. Oh, well, he's got the four, seven, 10. Let's see where the wood settles down. Bob Whitcomb's gonna shoot at the four horsemen right. Well, this wood is way out front right now for yeah. Tom if it stays there. He would like that second piece to roll up. Because he hits the first piece, the ball is going to take off on him. So I don't think the second piece is going to help. And well, now it's rolling back into play. If he can push the front piece straight back. Now well, he doesn't want to go too far. Tom's taking a little extra time to think about this when he knows how big this yeah. shot is. I hate to say this because you lose accuracy when you do this, but you almost want to slow the ball down to keep that front piece of wood in play. Hit it too hard, it's like a pick up and go right up over the top. Well, he did get that back piece of wood to move over a little bit, Dan, as you mentioned. He had to wait quite a while for it to come over, but it did come over. Tom's gone up, taking a look at it. This is like a four-foot putt that he's looked at from every <laughs> angle. Now he'll try it. And he's got it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You're going to remember those three boxes. Now, Bob Whitcomb also had to wait a long time for his shot because Tom waited and... That gives the skin to Tom Morgan, a $25 skin here in the sixth, and that is Tom's first skin of the day. Here in the 16th box, you take another look at that spare. See, he just drives the wood back. That second piece did take the 10 pin. That puts Tom in the lead for second place by five or Bob Whitcomb, but he's working on a spare. And Eric Young punches out the half Worcester. Jim Gregatis also pushes out the half Worcester. Both on the left-hand side, too, the two and the eight. Oh, oh, boy. Well, we've seen it made twice, both on lane four, that time by Eric Young. It's been Eric's day all the way. He seems destined to cruise in in first place. He's got a sizable lead over second place right now. Meanwhile, Jim Gregatis in need of marks, not getting them at 79 through 7. Here's Eric Young's half Worcester conversion. You know, both him and Tom played it on the inside, too. You usually want to go have the ball take, like the, in that case, the 4 7, but they're right both in the 1 3 pocket, and it went quick. Spare up leading for the skin, which is a $30 skin here in the seventh. Bob Whitcomb needs marks. Wants that 7 pin to go over. Now, don't forget, his ball breaks from right to left. He may just clip the wood and have the ball carry on into the seven pin. Oh, boy, Tom's going to make this shot again. <laughs> I wouldn't bet against it right now, I'll tell you that. Well, how about this wood for Bob Whitcomb? On the three, six, and seven with the nine, and the nine is still there. That's right. He went to the right-hand side. Good effort there. Give the skin to Eric Young. It's worth $30. He's up to $265 right now. 10 box for Bob Whitcomb and an eight for Tom Morgan. We check the scores. 252 plus a ball for Eric Young cruising along in first. You see the battle for second. Tom Morgan leading Bob Whitcomb by eight. And Jim Gregatis trailing by 22. He's not out of it yet. He'd probably have to mark out though. Well, there's, there's a big one. It's a couple of rows. Eric misses the head pin, but it doesn't turn out too badly for him. It leaves just the one and the nine. Candle pin skins brought to you in part by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Eric Young for the spare. Oh! <laughs> Is it Eric's day or what? <laughs> Well, you know, there's two ways to play that <laughs> shot. The right way and Eric's way. <laughs> Here's the strike by Jim Gregatis. Oh, boy. 
Had the one and the nine, missed the head pin, hit a piece of wood, kicked the nine forward into the head pin. <laughs> oh, you got to be able to read the greens. <laughs> Tom Morgan. Uh-oh. Oh. Almost ended up with that leave again. Bob oh. Whitcomb needs a mark, especially since Jim Gregatis has already put one up there. Jim, by the way, wins the skin here in the eighth with that strike. This is very close to determine who's coming back next week. You know Eric Young is in, but the other two bowlers, very, very, other three bowlers are very close for second place. Jim's in third, but he has a strike working. The strike wins the skin for him also, as Bob and Tom are both open in the eighth. So we go to the ninth, and Tom Morgan leading Bob Whitcomb by 10, but watch out for Jim Gregatis with that strike up. Jim was to throw another strike. Ooh, Eric Young with just two on his spare fill. But Eric's going to be back next week. There's no, no concern there. Oh, Jim looking for the double. Looked pretty good going in, a little full. Wow, Eric almost made it again on the half twister. I would say Jim would almost have to make this one. Nope. That's going to make it very, very difficult for Jim Gregatis. Eric Young will take a nine. And Jim takes eight. Eric Young has 12 marks in 19 boxes. And you see he's at 281 with a box to go. He could top 300 with a mark for two games. Well, Bob Whitcomb will throw first, trailing Tom Morgan by 10 pins. Tom really could help his cause right here. Oh, crashing eight pin drop, but look at the two pins that are left. The seven and the eight. Piece of wood way out in front. And Bob oh, Whitcomb yes. makes a great shot in the ninth to keep alive. Could win the skin too. Yes, it does. And that ball was a lob by Tom Morgan, but it doesn't cost him anything because he didn't knock anything down. Call made by John Mazzetti, our lob line judge. And they're still there. It's an eight box for Tom Morgan. Bob Whitcomb wins the skin in the ninth with this spare. What a shot. A $30 skin for Bob. Well, Bob, Jim's going to have to throw a strike. There's no question about it to keep himself in. He'll need at least two strikes, and then who knows. Meanwhile, could be a great battle for Bob and well, Tom head to head. still there's, alive. There's the strike for Jim. And a strike for Eric Young. Well, we know we're gonna, every bowl is going to be back. We've got a carryover already. Here's Jim Gregatis with the strike. Eric Young matched it moments later. Gives a double. With the fill, does not get the double. Eric to fill his. We know we're going to have a carryover for the last $75 skin of the day. Eight fill for Jim Gregatis, 122, and a total of 224. But that is not going to be good enough. 138 for Eric Young. He throws a 299. <laughs> well, here we go for the last spot. Eight pins. Bob Whitcomb trails Tom Morgan by eight. But Bob, as you can see, got the spare in the ninth. Head to head to determine who's coming back next week. Ooh, off target for Tom. Big ball right here for Bob Whitcomb. Oh, oh my. my. Not the time to have that happen. He chopped out just the three pin. And there is a big shot for Tom Morgan. He could not afford a bad box. Has to convert this. Bob Whitcomb need this for a spare. And that close. But Tom Morgan has escaped, and he will be back for a sixth week next Saturday. That is remarkable. Bob Whitcomb throwing a one-pin chop out, and now we will keep going to determine our last $75 skin of the day. But we already know that 
Eric Young and Tom Morgan will be back next week. Jim Gregatis actually wound up finishing third, one pin ahead of Bob Whitcomb. And he's still fighting. He wants that last skin. Nope. Jim makes this mark. Eric can sit down, and he does. Eric's going to finish it out anyway, but he's already out of it as Jim Gregatis has put up the spare. This to decide our last skin of the day, $75. What a battle we had for second place. Again, the... Remember, this time, it's either going to take a strike to win the skin, or whoever gets a spare will continue. All the bowlers do not continue after this. Uh, That's right. Only the, the frame. only the bowlers who tie would continue. Yeah, but Bob. Bob Whitcomb has a chance to uh, tie it. And there will be no strike, so it's going to take a spare to keep this going. And there it is for Bob. So he's still alive. Tom Morgan is not. So Bob Whitcomb and Jim Gregatis will now settle it head to head, this last $75 skin. Only eight pins separated second place from fourth place today. That's remarkable. Remember, this is a new box. The fill does not count. Oh, my. And Bob has himself another chop out. Boy, first the three-pin chop on that last spare fill that he had, and now this. Jim Gregatis takes another spare. And Bob Whitcomb cannot make it happen, so the last $75 skin of the day goes to Jim Gregatis, but it's going to be Eric Young and Tom Morgan coming back next week, and we will be back with more on Candlepin Skins in a minute. Bob lost his dad in a plane crash during the war. He was only three. That had a profound effect on him. He's a great dad who always loves being with our children and enjoys kids wherever he goes. I think it's why Bob was such a great high school teacher and coach. Bob knows that this election is about all our kids, about a clean environment, quality education, and strong families. That's why he's fought so hard for these issues in the Senate. How do I know Bob Smith so well? I know Joe Smith. And Bob Smith is more than just my senator. He's my husband. Something wrong with my car. Could you take a look? I'll check it out. You need suspension work. Better see the experts at Meineke. Meineke does suspensions? Meineke doesn't just do mufflers and brakes. They do complete undercar care. Now, buy any Gabriel Gas Shock or Gas Strut at Meineke's regular low price. Get the second one at 25% off. This is a limited time offer, so hurry. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Remember? They shut the government down twice. Newt Gingrich and Bob Dole. They tried to cut Medicare $270 billion. Cut education and training $31 billion. Deny adequate health care to millions of children. The president stopped them, protecting Medicare and education while balancing the budget. Ten million new jobs. But Newt Gingrich isn't done. He wants to keep his Republican Congress so they can try again. Don't give them the chance. Delicious food at affordable prices in a pleasant country atmosphere is what Church's Restaurant in Londonderry is known for. Whether you're interested in dining on the lighter side or a full course dinner, both are always available at Church's Restaurant. Now open on Mondays and serving dinner from 4 to 9, Monday through Thursday, Friday and Saturdays till 10. Church's Restaurant is also available for functions. Morgan's Tavern and Church's Restaurant are family owned and operated, so you'll be assured of the best quality. Morgan's Tavern and Church's Restaurant, where good friends meet. What's so good about the taste of apple cinnamon Cheerios? Mm. It's an apple thing, right? Mm. Definitely the cinnamon. No way! It's the baked in taste. Sliced apples, cinnamon, and brown sugar baked right into every little O of apple cinnamon Cheerios. Baked in taste. That's what makes them good. Have you tried multigrain Cheerios? I did that multi-grain thing back in the 70s. I don't want to do it again. I like them. Low fat. No flavor. These are very good. Mmm, I like it. It's a 90s kind of thing. 
Welcome back to Candlepin Skins. And once again, Dan, uh, this is the whole element of this competition that makes it so exciting. It's not necessarily who comes in first. In the case of today, Eric Young uh, pretty much cruised to the first place uh, victory, but it was who came in second, and there was a great battle there. Well, that's right. And Tom, again, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, it was throw strikes. Now, you throw the ball and hope you get the strikes, but he had to make some spectacular spares to keep in this match and, and eventually come out second place. All right, let's check the total pinfall right now. Here are the totals for today's show. 299 for Eric Young came just one pin short of that 300 mark for two games. An outstanding 161 in the opener. And then you see how close it was for second place. The 231 for Tom Morgan. And then Jim Gregatis and Bob Whitcomb just one pin apart. As for the prize money, the skins money, Eric Young the big winner there. But we talked about this earlier, Dan. Uh, pinfall doesn't necessarily mean money and vice versa. Jim Gregatis comes in second with $195 even though he finished third. And Bob Whitcomb also on the board, $115. And look at Tom Morgan. He finished second, but just got that one skin in the second game for $25. Yeah, he'll take that, though, coming back, and he'll probably win all the skins this coming week. You never know how it's going to. But Jim threw the strikes, and that's what helped him with the skins. All right. We will have Eric Young and Tom Morgan back next week, and they will be joined by two bowlers from the Worcester area roll-off, Steve Reno from Southbridge, Massachusetts, and Rob Burkeel from Worcester, Massachusetts. So we hope you'll be back next Saturday. Don't forget tomorrow, Candlepin Stars and Strikes at 12 noon from Park Place Lanes and Wyndham. Until then, for Dan and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Thanks for joining us.